Close your eyes and watch your breath. As for anything else that comes by, just let it come by. You don't have to get involved. You've got work that needs to be done inside right here, right now. The work of your mind. We take care of the affairs of the body and the affairs of the world so much that the mind gets neglected. It's like a little orphan. It works hard in the house but never gets any, any recognition. In other words, the needs of the mind are for something good inside. We tend to give it little pleasures here and there, physical pleasures or pleasures with other things. But the kind of pleasure that really goes deep into the heart, that's something that tends to get neglected. So let's give the mind a chance, give it some time to have its own time by itself, look after itself, so it can tend to itself and take care of its wounds. Because it gets wounded with what? It gets wounded with greed, aversion, and delusion, both inside and outside. The outside part isn't so bad, it's the inside part that wreaks a lot of havoc in the mind. If you think of the mind like a committee, some members of the committee are trashing the committee, and a few are trying to clean up after them. So we have to take the disobedient members and put them off to the side, and give the good members a chance to gain some strength. Because the mind is constantly pulling against itself. It wants to do this, and it wants to do that. And good things, bad things all have their pull. And you want to learn to strengthen the parts of the mind that want to go with what's skillful. Remember what the Buddha said? The, Wisdom begins with the question, what, when I do it, will lead to my long-term welfare and happiness? And the wisdom there lies in seeing that, one, it's your actions that are going to make a difference, and two, that long-term is better than short-term. So you have to watch out for the short-term members of the mind that want a quick fix and one of their pleasures right now, and say that the long-term is going to be better for you, because the, the amount of pleasure and the length of the pleasure is going to be much better. And it's the kind of pleasure that doesn't have any bad impact on the mind. It's the pleasure that comes from concentration it actually makes the mind clearer. The pleasure that comes from things outside tends to fog the mind, make it blurry. You can't see itself clearly and it ends up not being able to see anything at all clearly. So you want to get the mind so it can sort things out, have a sense of clear pleasure inside, and that way it can look at its life and determine which direction you want to go. Because we're constantly aiming our thoughts and aiming our words, aiming our actions in some direction. The problem is the directions keep changing, and as a result, we don't get to accomplish much of what we really want. But if you make up your mind that this is where you want to go, and this is what's really in your true best interest, and then keep it there, then life takes on meaning, life takes on direction. And the things you want are more and more possible, because the mind isn't working at cross-purposes. You've got everybody on board with that realization that you want a happiness that's long-term. This is why the Buddha taught. He saw that everybody was running around looking for short-term happiness when the long-term is available. And it's so much better. So he keeps pointing out that this is where true happiness lies, in training the mind, and getting all the different members inside on board, with the realization that if you work together, okay, then you can attain the happiness that is really good for you. To try to keep the mind unified like this, because that's where you gain your strength, that's where you gain your true well-being.